All right, so this video is not about this thing, but just want to show it off real quick because it's pretty cool and uh, it needs a lot of work still. But let's go ahead and jump back into the modular series here. Some people have been having a lot of questions, still having a hard time understanding how to make their own kits. And so um, kits are interesting because they're not necessarily going to be used as the kit in the game engine necessarily. You might have to combine things together later on. You might have to atlas things. It just depends on how you go about creating it. You can start trying to optimize it from the start, but sometimes it's a little bit harder. And so you have to keep in mind, you're going to be working with different types of textures. You might have trim sheets. You might have atlases. You might just have um, a hero prop that has its own texture work going on and different materials or textures for that. So um, let's just jump into this single floor tile. Let's do it. As we'll do a, um, um, a two meter one. Okay. So there we go. And so we know we're going to create a floor of some sort, right? So we have this. Good. Now, let's create a wall. We're going to keep the wall real simple here. Okay, we're going to do center align, and we're going to turn on snapping, absolute grid snap. I'm also going to be using um, a scale of 0.1, so I snap every 10 centimeters automatically. Okay, And so maybe we want a 3-meter wall. Now this is what that's going to end up looking like three by two, perhaps. All right, something like that. Okay, let's go ahead and jump it on back. So you can see here if this was on the grid at this point, floor kind of goes underneath it. All right, and now let's say you need a doorway. I'm going to use the same basic idea here. Let's set it to width, and let's do like a one point two meter wide door section. We could set this to uh, 2.4 meters high. All right. Now, this floor has no depth to it. So something that's interesting is, is a lot of you guys don't understand that um, when I do all that pre-offsetting stuff for my other videos, this is kind of what we're doing. Like, you don't have to pre-offset it. You could leave it flat and just move it later on. All right. So, like, how you work with these things is entirely up to you if that's something you want to do. So, But if you are going to have this kind of depth laying over the top of the walls here like this, then you might want to, um, you know, move your doorways up, right? So this this section here would just go up another 20 centimeters because of it being higher like this. So that also gives you a chance to you know, make these uh, have some depth to them. I'm gonna select it all and flip it. So we, we might have something like that, right? Now, if we had a two-story or three-story building or whatever, and we were to start bringing this down, so these are gonna potentially tile one on top of another where they go every three meters. Uh, if you had a ceiling tile as well, that was thick, right? You see how this starts to act like a wall of sorts? We got a 40 centimeter section now with these two units combined. All right, so you gotta, you gotta think of it like that. You're sticking and stacking together a 3D puzzle basically, um, but the simpler you keep it, the better off you are. So maybe you don't wanna have these ones like this. Maybe you want them to only come up uh, 10 centimeters and then 10 centimeters down. Well, this could end up being two units like that, right? So that's that's kind of the point there. Now, someone else was asking about textures. How do you work with the textures? Or should you apply textures off the bat? There's nothing wrong with applying textures off the bat. Um, it just depends on uh, what you're doing exactly. Because if I'm, say, going to create a wall unit, we'll use this one. We'll just copy it. Um, and I need it to run three meters out. Right, but I want it split in three sections, so I have three different maybe trims, right? So I need to keep this in mind. Uh, when this is unwrapped, UV unwrap here, you'll see it looks like this right now, but let's just unwrap it. I forgot we had depth to these. Usually I don't work with the depth like that, but let's do this anyways. Okay, so let's get rid of all that backside real quick. Do the split. There we go. Just you unwrap, bam. You can see it lays into this texture like so. And there's no size to it right now, but that's the UV space being utilized. So what this means is that we have extra additional room on this texture sheet, perhaps. And so if we're doing a trim, potentially, uh, we might be able to get away with doing an extra piece. Right? Or a uh, atlas, should I say, not a trim. Like this piece might actually just fit inside of there, right? See how that works? So we can have four panels like so, no problem, okay? 
Now, the, the only issue I'm having here right now is that this, I'm probably going to do all at one go so that I don't have to worry about them lining up. You see how that worked out. Okay, It actually just kind of lays in there automatically. If the size was off, it wasn't this extra meter, then it would um, essentially have issues in there. And you can also split this up as well. Like you're not stuck here um, with this, right? Like you might have to use knife cut for this one, but if you wanted a couple tiles like this, you could do that. If you wanted just one tile like this and one like that, you could do that. You see where this is going? So modeling off of your texture sheet is kind of an interesting um, workflow. But it's doable right there's nothing wrong with this so if we go in here and we start splitting things up i'm just pressing y to separate all of them um, and i can take out a separate section here now we can actually add additional details to this however we want and texture this and uv map it and whatever else we might want to do so let's do section out okay and then we could work backwards inwards as well. This is something that can occur. We'd have to float this about floating geometry when baking, right? And so we can do things like that. And this will be completely flat at the end of the day. And this will have a little bit of depth to it. That's one way you can work. Okay. On the other hand, you can make a bunch of assets that fit into this footprint. You could think of this as the footprint of the, the wall, right? So maybe, maybe you want to do just some tiles that stick out a little bit like this, right? Now you have a footprint there for those, but you can unwrap these uniquely as well. You don't have to keep them on a trim sheet necessarily or an atlas. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it'll be an atlas, but you could unwrap these so that they're unique, basically, if you really wanted to. And then reutilize those wherever you see fit. So you can see where this is kind of going. So you create something like this, right? And before you know it, I'll subdivide this one. You have a bunch of kind of unique pieces all put together. I'll set this to individual real quick. Scale it like that. There you go. And this one, maybe we just want... Um, I subdivide it, but hope oh, that didn't do it. It's got like additional vertices or something on it. So hold on a second. Might isolate it for a second by pressing Shift H just to see what's going on here. There's a bunch of additional verts that I don't need. Okay, and so should be able to loop cut it, but it's not working. All right, let's separate it as an object, so we're gonna not worry about the other ones. I should be able to dissolve these additional points, these vertices, subdivide it, get something like that. Maybe I just want to pop this out as a panel a little bit. Helps when creating a normal map to taper everything. Okay, so now we can do something like that. Maybe this is just like a section of wall. That's kind of the run it gets. Um, personally, I want to break in it. So like right at the tops and the bottoms, we'll break it a little bit. So it has a little seam there. So if I was to bring this out now like this, scale it in a bit, just bevel it. You could bevel the corners. If it's hard to do that, you could always um, separate something. And in reality, you could just float that piece. So this would still be connected, right? And then this number, right? Something more like that, maybe. Double that, too. All right, you see where this is going now. Okay, and so very kind of a simple setup here, right? Now, uh, I'm going to hide this one for a sec. This is the trick. The grab dock add-on will let you pull out height information, normals, and all that fun stuff. Uh, so we're going to go to grab dock set up the scene when you set up a default scene it goes to the center like so um, and you shouldn't really do this but i'm going to show you how to do it anyways you're going to turn um, selectable on you can grab it now okay this is the the backdrop plane and everything moves along with it 
And so what we actually need to do here is just um, rotate this something like so, a 90 degrees, rotate it 90 degrees this way. Oh, maybe the other way, this way. So 180 back this way. Okay. So this was two meters, it's supposed to be three now. I need it to align to those. If you're on the grid, it's easy. Like it's not that hard. And then also you want this to be right at the back. Like literally at the same spot, basically. And if we do a quick, make sure we uh, leave cam on exit preview. Let's do a quick look at these normals. Okay. We can see what we're looking at now. Okay. So you can spend some time modeling these, creating your, your base textures and everything you want there. Um, I'm just going to use, I think we'll do curvature too. Yeah. And then we'll... Um, do mat ID preview. Okay, so we got a couple different material IDs. It's not really that random to me. And so there's an there's an update to an add-on coming that's going to let you make uh, vertex colors a lot easier to se separate things like this. But um, that's not done yet. So I, I got to wait until the guy finishes making that add-on and then I'll do a, a video on it. But um, so yeah, pretty much right now. We, I mean, we could just roll with the normal and the curvature. Matt ID probably would help a little bit. So let's just um, set the folder here. Name it. We'll call it um, Wall. Export the 16-bit. Uh, sure. To the desktop. Select and uh, 2048 is fine for now. Export it. We're gonna go into Substance Painter to just throw some texture onto this. We do need a plane to work off of. Doesn't matter if it's that one or not. Just a plane. So we're gonna export an FBX file of a simple plane. Doesn't even matter if it's scaled right technically, but um what's this called? Plane. Or well it'll adopt the name of this, I think. So wall. Um Atlas 01. And selected object only, bam, done. Now we should be able to go to substance, load up that plane. And we're going to have a PBR metallic rough to 1024, uh, let's do 2048, direct X, compute, bam. Okay. Now this is in here. We need to go to, we're going to import to the project. So import, add resources. We got these three resources, boom. Uh, these are all going to be textures. If you hold shift and click all these, or control and click, whatever, and you set it to texture, they all take texture just by the way. So set it to a project for now if you ever wondered about these shelf is permanent project is temporary for the or for this file and current session is temporary it'll actually disappear next time you load up substance just so you know and um so yeah we're just going to import these as textures boom done just like that and now um, we're not going to use we're going to probably try to uh, there's no point in baking let's just use this as you could bake a high poly to a low poly if you want to. Well, it's a little bit more involved, but oh, it's down here. There it is. So the normal, bam. Material ID, which would be the uh, select ID map, basically ID map, and then curvature. I don't have any ambient occlusion, so I might try baking the ambient occlusion. I don't know how that's going to work out though. You'll see those just updated and loaded. So, let's see if we can bake an AO out of this somehow. Or maybe a position and a thickness too. This is going to use... I thought it had an option to change what it's going to use. Whether you use uh, the model or the normal. But I guess not. Okay. Position, thickness. Okay. Alright, so let's just bake it real quick. Let's go to common change it to 2048 you see the AO does come in a little bit it's not real dramatic at least it looked like it did maybe that was just the lines between the the different tiles yeah it doesn't look like it did much you can always check by going down here to uh, check your different ones so obviously the normal is loaded but let's check AO and see what it did yeah it got a little bit of AO right on the edges of the thing that's weird all right anyways so we got this going on now. 
we could just throw materials on here. I got a smart material I made for my walls. So I got like this generic wall that's supposed to be like a sci-fi wall thing going on. But you can see I can hold control while dragging this out and drop it onto the color ID. So maybe um, I want this on the green sections, right? So now it's going to load it up. It doesn't look like much. It just adds a little bit of kind of painted metal look, right? And so that's that. Um, I just made a new one for, let's see, new smart material in here somewhere for spaceship hulls. There you go. Maybe we'll do that one on these, these ones. And none of the color came over. Hmm. Maybe I got to change the color myself. I don't know. Usually the color shows up, so. Interesting. All right. Oh, are we on the right material yet? Base color. Hmm. My material broke. That's weird. Let's toss a fill color in the top and see what that does. That one works. Why's my other one not working? Oh, because it's using smart mask, probably. Let's remove the mask for a second. It's probably what's going on. It's just, yeah. There's not enough data here with that mask to, uh, to use it. That's why. We'll try a different one, see if that works. Okay. You see it's in the crevices now. So we'll flip it. Global invert. We'll do something like that for now and I like to bump the colors back a little bit even though you don't have to do that I do it's got like a fiberglass kind of look to it that was the goal and so there we go now let's just throw one more material on here we'll just do aluminum for this one thing oh we'll do a smart material for that one too the, um, the aluminum here, smart material. Yeah, you can see that curvature map probably wasn't good enough, or I didn't shade this smooth either. I don't think so. You know, pay attention to things like that because you got a little faceted look to it. It's just gonna kill the believability, right? And that's more than likely I didn't shade things smooth. Could be the curvature map as well. Sometimes it does weird things like that, or the normal map. So you can see not shaded smooth at all. Um, so yeah, we could shade this all smooth. Just do an auto smooth. Um, see if that helps. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You could always do um, sharpens with hard ops. Oh, not what I was expecting. We weighted normals. All that fun stuff. All right. And so uh, going through that process, you can just re export this. It should replace the files there. Uh, so you might have to just um, re-import or refresh those. And let's see here, reload. I'll just reload them all, let's see what happens. Oh, don't reload that one. Let's see if that fixed it. That was not the one, it's this one. That should have fixed it though. Oh no, did not. All right, I'll have to play with that one later. Apparently, it doesn't doesn't like it. Or maybe it's a second file now. It shouldn't have it should have renamed or it should have used the same names. So, we'll take a look. Yeah, you can see it's not, it's nice there, but um let's, let's re-import it, I guess, maybe. Set it to texture, project, import, boom. And then Texture sets. Let's, I'm pretty sure it's the normal. Okay, reloading it that way worked, but that's weird. Okay, and so there you have it. You have a basic, really strange texture. Just for good measure, I'm going to add a little bit more interest to it. I'm going to throw a rust on top. So we have something a little bit more to look at here. So I'll just type in rust and throw it right at the top. Do a um, Smart mask here, hopefully it works. Cavity rust. A lot of times these don't work without the full bake. But that one sort of worked. Okay, so we'll do that, that's fine. Let's go ahead and export this. 
Uh, I'm going to be using just a PBR metallic roughness. Okay. Based on output, based on that. And then um, sending it to the desktop. All right, so your output templates, PBR metallic roughness is what we were using, right? I've created an additional one. So I have DirectX and OpenGL normals. So basically, you just you see how they're set up. DirectX is this one. Okay, RGBs. And then 16 bits. All right, just set it up like that. You'll get both of them. So you have one for Blender, one for Unreal, or whatever the case may be. But you can also um, export out your packed maps or whatever for Unreal Engine. And you can use those in Blender if you set them up properly. Just so you know. Actually, I'll do that just to show you how to do it real quick. Um, so we're going to be using Unreal Engine 4 Pact. This is the default one, I think. Just double check. Yeah, it's all the default settings here. You can see it's mesh name, base color, whatever. So if we look at the list, we got wall, atlas, 01, normal, base color, whatever. So it should export just fine now. Boom. There we go. It's out and on its way. Okay. And so we're going back to Blender. Just like that, we have a trim or atlas made. Not a big deal. Go ahead and sharpen these guys up, maybe. We don't need that one right now. Um, I just deleted all that. There's a reason for it. But I probably shouldn't have deleted the back one, actually. That one we need. This other one, not so much. OK, this one we're going to go ahead and set up with a new material. It'd be a good idea to name it at this point. And you want to load in your textures. So do textures first, image textures, open. This is the packed Unreal version. So we just need these normal metallic base color. Okay. And we load up one, and of course, it doesn't load up all of them. So we got to see which one came in. We'll do a base color, the AORM one or ORM, whatever you want to call it. That one. And the uh, normal. OK, so normal goes non-color. It should go non-color. Um, we have to split the colors here. So we're going to do a converter, separate RGB. Plug that into there. OK. And then red will be mixed. So we're going to do color, mix RGB. That should be the ambient occlusion, which isn't really going to matter in this one, but uh, that's how you set it up. So we do red to that, that to that, and now we can do a um, multiply. You can set this to whatever you want, but multiply and set it to one usually works best. And there you go. We have that set up. Green is going to be uh, roughness, so we're looking for roughness right there. Blue is metallic. Okay, normal map goes into a vector normal map. And then we also need a color RGB curves because the way the uh, the pack texture for Unreal works is it's uh, using DirectX normal. So you got to go to the green channel, grab here, flip here, flip here. Plug this in. And plug this in. And plug that in as well. So non-color, non-color, lost it all together. We go to material preview up here, this wall should get exactly what we had. Okay, so we can go back to layout now. And we can work with this, okay? You might have to change your viewport settings back to material or whatever, but we can delete that one, sharpen that one, sharpen that one. Okay, so we have a wall panel, essentially. We also could have a floor panel. So if you take this one and unwrap it, UV editor, okay, and apply that material to it, can't really see it yet, but there it is. Um, we know we want it to fit on maybe that one over there. Let's do that. So you can snap these in size. Usually that helps, and as you move them, you can also snap, but it doesn't always line up that well. So you got to be a little bit careful when you're moving things around, but let's snap it up a little bit. And we should be able to get it to snap into place, hopefully. If not, you have to grab these little sections. And um, you'll have to line them up just perfect like to the texture, which is pretty rough when you're creating them based off of an actual, um, like a sheet, like a model or whatever like that. So this could be extremely hard to get right. Just keep that in mind. 
There's also a um, pixel snap, which will also not work because the reason why is because these areas where these pixels live, they're at like half increment levels. So like, uh, think it's like, let's say this is like 256 pixels down. No, it's like 256.71 or something like that. It's weird how it does it, but it, it that's what ends up happening. And so it can be almost impossible to actually line these things up on this. And so as a result, just UV mapping like this can be a little bit challenging. However, this is where building off of the actual trim or the sheet itself can be quite useful because I know that these were laid out in a certain manner, right? You can see how everything wants to kind of snap together anyways, right? And if it doesn't, you can, you can probably uh, nudge it over so that it will a little bit easier. So if I move this on, you see I'm moving it on Y, it stretches it. You have to do correct face attributes. Bam. That's exactly where it starts and stops. Okay. So you turn correct face attributes back off. You can separate this. There's your floor tile. Right. You might have to model some stuff back onto it. I have to replace the origin point. But now you're in, you're in a position that's much better because you can recreate this thing relatively fast. Do an inset and just pull them up a bit. There you go. All right. So there's little tricks like that that go a long way. But now we have a floor tile potentially that's yellow, which is really not my first choice. But you get the idea. We can now place it very precisely, exactly where we need it. It's, it's on the grid. It's a, just a single little section. It's nothing special here going on now, right? And so even if we scaled this up, because we put it in that corner like so, it's, it'll scale fairly nicely. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that when you place your origin, well, if I can get it to scale. All right. Um, one of the things you'll realize, though, is that when you place origin points in the center, sometimes they scale nicer in a way, but in other times they scale worse. Okay. I'm not sure why it's not scaling now. What's going on here? What did I do? I did something for sure. Oh, is this a grab dock background plane? That might be why. <laughs> Whoops. Um, we'll bring it back. I'm pretty sure it's locked or something. And I could probably just unlock it. Yeah, it scales locked. And we can actually uh, go to grab dock. We're done using it. We can just remove. Grab dock and throw us in there, of course. Of course. And um, anyways, we'll keep going. This is just a plane. It's nothing that special. But you can see. Oh, turn snapping on for rotation and scale here. That'll help. There you go. So now we can have 10 centimeters up. If we do want some sides to this, we'll have to unwrap those. Right? So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to do a uh, quick bunch of seams. Try to get it going again, if I can. OK, just switch to face. Oh, that didn't work. All right, just loop select. There we go. <laughs> Unwrap. All right, so you can see they all came in laid out like so. So we're probably going to have to rotate these. that um, stack them using the UV toolkit here which you can't no longer buy sorry guys I didn't ex know that that one was gonna go just disappear from download I have to find a replacement I think Zen UV is another one that has like UV tools or something like that I just want this to line up right there that's good enough. So it's got some kind of depth to it, but all right. So a regular wall without a door is the same thing as this. Quite almost quite literally. I'm gonna delete all the excess around it though. All right. 
that's too much. Let's mirror this, bisect it, flip it. I want it to be solid for a second. Apply that mirror. Okay. So generally speaking, this is what you're not seeing. Right? If you don't see it, there's not really a point in having it. Just, just saying. You see, we did this number. Um, project from view. We can do that number. We can uh, match island here real quick. Whoop. Let's give it a material or it's not going to do that, I guess. Stretch to bounds. Oh, fit to bounds. Stretch to bounds. Fit to bounds. Same thing. All right. See, this starts to work out fairly well. But you can't always just throw these around like this either, which is a problem. Really need a square to work off of. So, guess what we're doing? Guessed it. Plane. So, I want a wall unit that is... Maybe... I'm going to turn on that correct face attributes again. So I can move this around a bit. I feel like this is jumping too much for some reason. Probably because it's too small, maybe. I don't know. Or it's off the grid or something. He's beyond the grid. Let's try that again. Says that's on the grid. I don't maybe I modeled it wrong, maybe not. I think that looks better. <laughs> Personally, so yeah. You sometimes you run into weird situations and you'll have to figure them out. We'll separate that one. We'll leave this sheet here so we can use the other ones later. Alright. So if this was some kind of wall unit. Maybe we can do this number, do this number. Scale it up real quick. You'll see it's short, right? It's a square. It's two meters tall. So we might want something above that. Probably use something like this. If you do leave correct face attributes on, you want to make sure. Um, you want to make sure that that's correct. You don't rotate it or move it inside of edit mode. That'll mess you up. Move it in object mode, just not edit mode. Okay, and you see how these are still lining up? So I don't know what's going on with the snap system there. It's kind of interesting. Maybe I got the scale off or something. I got to apply scales or I don't know. Something's going on there, but this is starting to work out now. That's off now, too. Alright, so let's scale it up. Now it's not off. Weird. Oh, no, it's just slightly off. See, correct face attributes. Yeah, turn it off a sec. So this. I'll separate as a new object. So I can just uh, inset it a little bit. Whoop, not individually like that. Let's do that again. Like this. I could scale on Y. But there you go. I could take these sections and extrude them out. And then uh, maybe bevel just this area. Alright, so I got two kind of things on top of each other. So you could think of this as like an addition. This was maybe like the original wall or something. And so you can do things like this. So now we got some kind of like wall panel going. Maybe I want more down here. You do an extrusion with correct face attributes on and work in the same direction. Usually you with that going on, you can turn correct face attributes off and you can pump it back the other way. And that will still be using basically the same UV island. So you can do numbers like that. Shade is smooth. 
Let's see where that's going, right? So you could consider this a wall unit together. Point it. Place the origin point down here. So these should now, as long as they were all lined up on this side here, which it looks like they were, should start snapping to, oh, I didn't select that one. Join them. You should now, now start snapping like this. No problem. You can flip things. Supply rotation and scale on these. I don't know. Something fills off here. You should be able to flip this. Get something like this going on, but you'll see that instant like butterfly effect where the uh, the seams like become apparent again. You can work with this. Um, it's just that you got to think about it a little bit differently. Like, let's borrow the floor tile just so we don't have to make more stuff. But uh, no, we won't borrow the floor tile. Let's do um, let's do this middle one here. Separate it, and we'll put the origin point down there like so. Let's just rotate this one up. Move it back. You see, if I stretch this one out, this is what we get. It's too tall, right? So that might be a problem. It could be, potentially, but it, I don't know. It might not be. Who knows? Depends on what you want to do, I guess. Um, if you want, like, a half a unit, you can see that's going to become half a unit there. So uh, 50 centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. You place this one next to this one now. You can see what's going on here. We got something started up. But this isn't going to align now because we had half a unit there. So we'll end up having to do another half a unit somewhere. And that's going to give us a whole unit. And then so when we start, <laughs> see, this is where the puzzle begins, right? Like how many half units do you have to use before you get to another um, grid line that where these will match up? May or may not. I don't know. I don't know in this one. I don't know that much math. In my head. All right. They will eventually line back up. Usually. Usually, I'm not gonna say always. Just usually. But like right here, they line up. So. You can see it takes a little while to get there, but this can now all be considered one giant unit if you wanted to join it. Um, the origin points back here, or should be anyways, before we join it. Let's make sure. Select this one last. Join it. Now we have a big unit. All right. So you might be doing this before you export anything to a game engine. You might combine things. You might combine them in the game in game engine. Just really depends. It's just what what are you trying to do, right? So we can make a hallway. That's really basic and nothing interesting, but there you go. We got this weird hallway now. Right? The EV likes to um, have viewport at 16. Turn it off if you're trying to walk around in this. So you press Shift tilde G and walk around. You see, we got something going at least. I mean, it's not real pretty, but it's it's going, right? So you can add accents and flares to this all over the place. So literally, um, let's grab a piece of this one. Let's just grab this one here. You can see I press L on this still because I didn't combine them. So I can Shift D, E, separate selection, have a new object. And um, this one, the origin point for it is actually off over here. But we're going to make a pillar out of it so that doesn't really matter. So what I want to do is just place it at the center for now. Rotate it. It helps to make a pillar line up with the grid. So you can scale this out, move it around. Um, you can grab this in edit mode, turn off correct face attributes for a moment. I want to use active element so I can snap this vertex to that grid line. Right? Might want to do it to all of them. So. Uh, select all of them with X-ray. I get something like that. Oh, I didn't grab all. Okay, there we go. Got it. Sometimes you got to double click. It's 
hard to see if you're selecting the same one over and over, but when you move it, if it if it doesn't all move, you know you didn't grab it. All right. And so this is a pretty repetitious pattern. We can break it up with other objects if we need to. Um, in this particular situation, I think I'm going to just mirror this so that it's solid. Um, I'm going to bump it out a little bit, though. So when it mirrors, it's a little thicker. Like that. And then it's a, I'm going to convert it to a mesh. Now it's a good idea not to, it's a good idea not to um, stretch things too much. You can see it's already kind of going haywire there. Um, and it, you don't want to like scale it like something like this because you're squishing your textures and it's really, sometimes it might work, but usually it's a bad idea. And um, also because of the way this is, this is all stretched out. I don't like that. I go ahead and grab through here. I want to just press um, U unwrap. Oh, you know what? Let's press Shift H real quick. I want to grab all the corners. So I'm going to use the cursor selector to get rid of all these other ones. I'll mark seams real quick. A U unwrap. There. Now can you press four? Eight. These aren't as important to me, but they are still important. You don't want stretching. Stretching is one of those things that pops up. You'll see it a lot in games. Um, it just happens because people are usually trying to push out so much so fast. And um, But you don't really want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to place this somewhere like here. The color map is usually the best one to kind of look off of. But Yeah, we'll, we'll put it like right there. So the textile density probably is maybe not reduced. Don't look too bad. All right. This is now positioned something like a pillar, at least. I was planning on using it like this. Put it down on the floor, or in the floor if we want. Okay. See, it's not tall enough. So you gotta make it taller. Okay, it's still probably not tall enough, but uh, we could center it up with the wall if we need to. Okay, maybe we want to place these only around these ones or something like that. Just really depends on what you're trying to achieve. You could do something like that. And you can also make this into probably a doorway relatively fast, um, a doorway unit or something. But you really want to make it more like a wall if you're doing this. Just cover one of those up. <laughs> She's like, what do, you, what do you want to do? Personally, I think this would be kind of cool, just having it stepped off a little bit. Uh, all right, and the reason it doesn't look like much is because, first of all, we're using an HDRI uh, lighting. I think EV works better with the lighting in the engine, personally. But when you do scene lights, you'll see it kind of come to life with the normals and everything. So where is it? There you go. Let's go to layout for this. Scene world, scene lights. See, nothing's going on here. Now you can actually do some like light, light dressing and all that fun stuff. So we're going to do um, a light, area light. Let's bring it up. So maybe behind these guys, there's lights. Um, might be a little bit hard to do it with this one. We could probably do like a, a point light, though. So we can bring that up. Okay, so lighting is plays a huge role in everything you do. So if we have like lights behind these guys, and make one like red every now and then, or one whatever blue. Let's try blue. Not enough blue in here. 
see how much more interesting this gets like relatively fast. Do like a little gradient scheme. You have different three different colors, blues or something like that. That. Okay. Then those would probably be on the other side too, right? Most likely. This is why most of your games you've played, they probably have really basic assets. You just didn't realize it. Because a lot of times they're doing, they're just doing stuff like this, right? You need a light fixture in here for those, of course, but um, it's nothing special. Do a light, area light, wherever it went. There it is. Probably have some lights down the hallway at the top. These ones might be more red or amber or whatever. I don't know. Probably shouldn't do ambers at all because everything is really yellow already. But so, like another blue wouldn't be bad, probably. Bluish, bright light. And you don't want to put them too close to each other either. You want a little bit of fall off between them, probably. So there we go. We got a hallway started. Like it's nothing. And you can modify this however you see fit. Maybe you don't want these to be so flat and boring. I mean, maybe maybe you can get away with a simple deform on this and do a bend. Maybe bend it like backwards or something. You want some stuff like that. That'd be a little bit more different. A little bit more interesting, perhaps. also do things like tapers so simple to form taper on z maybe want some like little triangular looking things or whatever there's all kinds of things you can do they're just assets right like you got to play with them you got to get used to working with them and then it's not so bad trust me like you'll be able to make some things really fast so this big metal sheet here at the top is really good for doorways and um so if we're gonna we're gonna sacrifice this one, but let's say we want to make a door unit real quick. I'm gonna do the same thing as we did before, 1.2. It's already at like okay. We'll just eyeball it then. It won't be accurate, but we'll eyeball it. All right, there's your doorway. Not a big deal. Let's we'll separate that face. Easiest way to deal with this, in my opinion, is to just scale it in using a medium point. Bring that one down a little bit. Okay, and then you can just take one side, extrude it out. In this case, we're going a whole. What is this? Uh, yeah, negative point one, I guess. Okay, and then this one will be positive point one. Should be, but it looks like it's, it's trying to do a point five. Uh, there we go. Take the top, pull that up. Notice I'm not worrying about the UV maps right now. It doesn't matter because we're gonna have to um, just bring this little section out a bit. Isolate it. Let's go to solid view for a moment. Don't need back faces. Don't need bottom faces usually. Might have to if you have like damaged models and stuff, but see these are backwards too, by the way. All of that normals are backwards, so I gotta flip those potentially. EV does both sides, so it doesn't matter. Game engine it will. And um this will unwrap a lot easier if these are out that way. Like that. Because it makes them, makes everything quads and it unwraps just uh, flawlessly, basically. So you don't need seams or nothing. 
see it does that number. If I press U, unwrap again, and I do uh, conformal, that number. So we'll do the angle based. Um, sometimes you might want to mark seams there and unwrap it like this. Just depends on what you're working on. Otherwise, you might have to straighten them out, which isn't impossible. It's like if you use uh, follow quads or whatever or straighten, like, let's remove those uh, real quick. There's an add-on for this. I forgot the name of the other one, but it's, it's like a one-click thing. Get that add-on. This add-on you can't really get. It. You see what's going on there, right? So there will be no seam in that. Um, unfortunately, Blender has an issue that most people don't realize, and that until it's too late, it cannot display low-poly UVs very accurately. Um, I don't know exactly why. It's from my understanding, it's like a hard issue that's at the base of Blender, and there's nothing you can do about it. I understand it. So the only thing you do is add more polygons or triangles, and even those get distorted. Um, so there's like an issue with the UV system, perhaps, to some extent. But um, yeah, anyway, so with that out of the way, we can see we have this going on now. And normally, walls have thickness to them, right? That's why these are, they were originally center aligned, but now they're just 10 centimeters forward. Or, well, they should be 10 centimeters. Um, but they're center aligned right now, so you can push them forward 10 centimeters. Not a big deal. Push this forward 10 centimeters. This should have its origin point somewhere down here, right? Oh, this one won't line up on the grid either. That's actually a good point um, to bring up. Sometimes this won't this won't work like this. You have to create what's for a game engine specifically. You have to create what's called sockets to get things to line up where you want them to. Here in Blender, you can create an empty parent to empty to the wall, and you can actually align this to the empty. I showed that in the um, doing the curved surfaces uh, video, right? The, the curved windows or whatever it was. And so you might need to th take those kind of things into consideration as well. And, uh, but for the most part, this isn't too bad. Um, it's now forward. So these sections in here need some depth to them, perhaps. This is your plug, right? Very simple. And so can have two different plugs that meet in the middle, usually, generally speaking. Um, and what that allows to occur is that you can, um, let's flip it the wrong way. Okay, I guess it's going to be difficult. Where's the origin point on this thing? <laughs> yeah, it should be like right here. Okay. There you go. There we go. Now I should be able to flip it over. Control M, the mirror like that, by the way. Middle mouse click to do it. And so the whole wall should do that as well, along with that floor section, right? We did it earlier. Um, but what this just happens to do now is uh, line up in this direction. Right. Should at least. I might have got some things off here uh, mathematically, but or alignment wise, just barely. You got to be careful with this because you're going to run into that issue where just have things that don't quite line up the way they should um, like these floors for example they're they're on 10 centimeter but um, because of the way we pushed them out probably wouldn't work out too well and um, might be better to have them so they meet these two meet in the middle here um, or you'll end up with that gap so the little things when you run into them sometimes you just got to go through and uh, figure out what to do so you do maybe push these ones back a little Something like that. As a result, this little section in the middle here become um, have a little gap in it. So essentially have a little gap in it. And so far it doesn't look like it does, does it? Alright, but they meet up now. Cool. So we need a little door trim. Just gonna place it right here real quick. Let's do a um, cube. This might not be on the grid. I have to play with this modeling style for a bit. It, it really takes, you have to do it. You just have to keep playing with it until it starts to make more and more sense pretty much. Like it, it's not hard necessarily. It's just, it takes a little bit of effort, right? 
takes a little bit of time to get these kind of things going just right. Because you'll find times that you don't actually need to um, line anything up. Like, it doesn't need to be on a grid. It doesn't, you know, there's there's little times that, like, you're not going to have your, you're not going to have to align to anything, right? Or maybe you just have to align to another, um, just another section. And so you're not worried about it starting to stop it on certain parts of the grid, right? It's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to explain, too. Like this one, for example, um, like it's it's a little door piece, right? We got that, but it doesn't it doesn't matter where this goes. Like if this, you see, what I'm saying that doesn't matter as long as it's over our floor and the origin points about where we need it, then it's okay, right? So in edit mode here, I'm gonna push that down. Real quick. So that probably does matter. We'll probably we probably do want this to be down on the grid, right? Base. That's its footprint. So it'll always we can place it somewhere like that. And if it needs to be thick, it can be. We can just intersect it um, a little bit smaller if needed. Perhaps, right? We need it unwrapped. I'm just gonna uh, smart project this one. I give it the material. UV editor. Let's make that that color. Okay, things like that can occur or happen, um, and so that's not too bad. Now, something fun you can do is a lot of game engines. You do instances of materials. Um, if you set your inst your master material like Unreal, you set up a master material. Um, it'll create basically a copy of the material that you can modify if you set it up correctly. You do things like instead of blending with just ambient occlusion there, maybe you could do a mix RGB and um, do a multiply. change it to like a dark color here okay so you might have something like that going on potentially you probably even get away with um, changing the roughness value maybe not even using um, texture if you not a good idea to not use a texture but you get the idea you can make things like this happen okay it's so it's just multiplying it but we can change the color here around as well. See what we can end up with. It's a little hard sometimes to get it to do what you want it to, but it's kind of interesting. I was hoping for like just a glossier black, but um, you can sometimes get away with this kind of stuff. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, when we go into this now, this whole object, we're going to set the material back to what it was. Uh, but these ones here, we're going to click plus sign and boom and assign. And now we have kind of these like greenish floor tiles or whatever. So if this wasn't here and this was flipped over in that manner, I have to run it back. You can see my pivot points have become misaligned. I knew they were going to do something weird like that earlier, but um, I have to fix that. But like these blue seams and stuff, that's pretty wild looking. I don't know if it's good, but it's it's wild looking. All right, so you can do um, you can mix colors on top. Use mask. You can change the colors of the materials if you used pure white with a mask. There's, there's all kinds of little things you can do, and it's um pretty efficient be able to just kind of like round those things out also the viewport here I feel it's too narrow I don't feel like it's a 50 millimeter it feels like a 80 um, so change it to like 45 or something it seems to be a little better in my opinion but focal length there all right so yeah 
but also you know in blender you're not limited to just doing that right obviously you could literally um you could do like mixes or whatever you want i want like just dark tiles instead they're a little glossier so you're free to do whatever you want with your materials in Blender if you're staying in Blender. It'd be nice to have like a little silver strip in those. You'd have to model that. The way we've done this, or the way we've done this, the way we did this is that um, while this might look okay um, right now, it's not really reusable, right? Like unless you're just doing big hallways. But you start with those base elements, right? Before you combine them. That is your elements, your modular kit. Okay, that's that's like a sub kit or stuff, if you would. Like you have, think of like, you have a sub kit for walls, hallway, walls, lobby, walls, or, or walls, um, cafeteria, right? You might have different like little sub kits for different rooms. Or you might have a big gen general kit that works across 90% of a map and then you might have just like a sub kit for like engineering room or something like that right so it'll all start to add up um, as you build it out but you have to think of like each little kit as a little section that you're working on right and as long as you put some time and energy and effort into your, your pieces like these ones right here right like they're not going to look so crappy right <laughs> you can need to design something better make the kit look more believable but these basic blocking shapes you know like you can texture these as you go along like if you wanted a wall unit with its own texture and then do that right there's nothing wrong with that sometimes it's better to break them up a little bit like we did with all that right sometimes it's not that's an atlas okay trim sheet would be left to right or top to bottom where it repeats over and over indefinitely you can use that for uh, details on here, like pipes going down the wall or whatever the case may be. Okay, so there's all kinds of different ways of working with different things, but um, yeah, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking it out. Maybe we'll put a light right here real quick for the thumbnail, an area light, just make it real bright. There you go. See? Lighting has such a dramatic effect on everything. It's the most, it's the single most important thing in an environment. You can have the ugliest walls that are just so basic that, and the light does everything for it. Okay. So you can see, it just fills it in right there, right? And now we have a, uh, this, whatever this is. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I will check you out in the next one. All right, take care.